A car with no wheels, no driver, no sound. Just a shimmer in the air and the slow hum of something once thought impossible. In the skies above Dubai, a machine lifted into the light, and for a few moments, the world changed. It didn't roar. It didn't announce itself. It simply hovered there, like a thought that had taken form. Above the city, beyond belief, people stopped speaking. Cameras shook in their hands. And somewhere in the silence, history quietly turned a page. The future had arrived, not in theory, not in dreams, but in motion, in midair. Let's dive in. The moment it lifted. It began like nothing at all. No roar, no countdown, just the shimmer of heat rising from a launch pad under the Dubai sun. And then it moved. The X-2 didn't leap or thrust upward. It rose with intention, like it had always belonged there. The rotors spun in harmony, no louder than a soft whir, lifting the smooth black capsule into open air. For a moment, it looked like it was floating on thought alone. People didn't cheer. They stared. Phones came up slowly, hands trembling not from excitement, but reverence. The silence wasn't staged. It was earned. You could feel it ripple through the crowd, a quiet awe that belonged more to temples than test sites. Above the skyline, the X-2 hovered with absolute calm. No wobble, no correction, just poise. It slid forward with elegance, turned gently, then glided above the marina like a shadow stitched to the sky. It didn't command attention, it invited stillness. Then, just as softly as it had gone up, it returned. A steady descent, perfect alignment, a gentle landing. No dust, no thunder, just presence. At that moment, it wasn't just a machine. It was a question answered. A century-long dream that finally let itself be real. No one applauded. They didn't need to. Because deep down, everyone watching knew this wasn't a show. It was the beginning. Meet the X-2. The X-2 doesn't look like a car. Not in the way we've grown up imagining them. It doesn't have wheels. It doesn't need a road. Its body is sleek and smooth, shaped like a teardrop designed by silence. Crafted from premium carbon fiber, the frame is both impossibly light and unnervingly strong, a skin wrapped around a mind that can fly itself. It holds two people, that's all. Two seats, side by side, surrounded by glass and air. No steering wheel, no throttle, just a screen. And trust. It lifts itself using eight rotors, arranged in a double-bladed formation, allowing vertical takeoff and landing. No runway required. No pilot's license required. Its top speed? 130 kilometers per hour. Flight time? 35 minutes on a full charge. And every second of that journey leaves behind exactly zero carbon emissions. No smoke, no fuel, no trail in the sky. It's not science fiction anymore. It's not a sketch on the back of a napkin. It's here, flying above cities. Built by Aero HT, the aviation arm of Chinese EV giant Xpeng, the X-2 is part of a fifth generation of experimental flight vehicles, not prototypes hidden away in secret hangars, but machines tested in the open thousands of times. And perhaps most importantly, it's fully autonomous. You don't fly the X-2. You tell it where to go, and it takes you there. Safely. Silently. A machine that doesn't just move through the sky, it listens to it. Ghosts of the sky. Long before the X-2 rose into the sky, the dream of flying cars was already old. It whispered through science fiction, 
danced in early sketches, and flickered across black and white newsreels. Decade after decade, the promise repeated itself that one day roads would end and the sky would open for everyone. But the sky didn't open easily. In 1909, E.P. Sverkov designed the Samolyot, a strange flying machine with paddle wheels, more boat than plane. It never flew. In the 1930s, Adolf Rohrbach tried again in Germany. The DVL, Germany's Aviation Institute, evaluated his design. It, too, went nowhere. In the U.S., an inventor named Jonathan Edward Caldwell built a rotor wing contraption that flapped like a bird. It collapsed. He was later charged with fraud. For every wild prototype that briefly lifted off, a dozen others stayed grounded. Some ran out of funding, others out of belief. The world wasn't ready, or maybe the dream was too heavy. So the flying car became a punchline, a symbol of futures that never arrived, a fantasy locked in drawings, never flesh. It lived in cartoons, in marketing buzz, in tech expos full of models that didn't move. But the dream didn't die. It waited. And when the X-2 lifted silently over Dubai, it carried more than its weight. It carried every failure that came before it, every forgotten name, every sketchbook is buried in dust. It flew for them, too, for the believers, the builders, the quiet minds who thought flight should belong to more than pilots and airports. They weren't wrong. They were just early. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Evtul. The code finally cracked. Evtul. Four letters that quietly cracked a code we've been chasing for decades. Electric vertical takeoff and landing. That's what it stands for, but what it means goes much deeper. It means no runway, no noise pollution, no fossil fuels, no pilots sitting behind rows of analog switches. It means a flying vehicle that knows where it is, where it's going, and how to get there with a level of precision no human hand can match. The X-2 is an EVTOL, and so will be the many that come after it. Unlike helicopters, it doesn't rely on one massive spinning blade. Instead, it uses multiple rotors, compact, controlled, and whisper quiet. There's no combustion engine, no oil leaks, no need for a hangar the size of a warehouse. But the real shift isn't mechanical. It's emotional, because EVTOLs aren't just about flying. They're about making the flight feel safe, familiar, uncomplicated. They don't need pilots because they are the pilots. Every flight is pre-programmed, monitored, and adjusted in real time. Weather? Accounted for. Traffic? Avoided. Humans? Just along for the ride. It's not the loud revolution we were expecting. It's a gentle one. A shift so quiet, most people won't realize it already happened. Until they look up, let's go further. Dubai's gamble. Not every city could have been first. It had to be a place that wasn't afraid of the sky. A place where ambition already touches the clouds. So it makes sense that Dubai was chosen. From the tallest building on earth, to man-made islands shaped like poems, Dubai has never waited for the world to catch up. When Xpeng's Aero HT looked for a launch site beyond China, they didn't look west. They looked here, to the desert that became a skyline. The flight was more than a test. It was a message. One backed by engineers, risk assessments, and the quiet approval of government officials who watched from the edge of the landing zone. Over 150 people gathered to witness it. Not in secret, not under NDA, but out in the open, with the city's full support. Dubai's Chamber of Commerce didn't just allow it. They guided it. They believed in it. And now, 
they're planning the framework for what comes next. Short-haul routes, autonomous air corridors, skyports integrated into urban life. Omar Abdulaziz Alkan, one of the leading voices behind the project, says two to three years is all it will take. Maybe even less. Because here, the sky isn't a boundary. It's infrastructure. And this wasn't a gamble. It was a blueprint. Let's keep going. The sixth generation promise. What flew over Dubai was the X2, but what's coming next is something more, something closer to the fantasy we've carried for generations. Xpeng's sixth generation model won't just fly, it will drive. An actual car with wheels and wings built for streets and skies alike. A hybrid machine designed to fold its rotors into its frame, slip into a garage, and then unfold itself when the road ends. Not someday, soon. The prototype was unveiled at Xpeng's 1024 Tech Day. Not with bombast, but with quiet certainty. It's lighter, smarter, designed with humans in mind. And it's expected to arrive by the end of 2024, with a price tag lower than anyone thought possible, under $160,000. Xpeng calls it air driving, a phrase that sounds like a paradox, until you see it move. Because the sixth generation isn't just about flying cars anymore, it's about choice. One moment, you're stuck in traffic. Next, you lift off. Quietly. Cleanly. The ground was never meant to be our only option. Let's finish this. The sky is ours now. The future doesn't always knock. Sometimes it just hovers. And that's what this was. Not a spectacle. Not a revolution marching down the street. But a quiet shift in how we move. How we dream. How we build the world around us. One moment, the sky belonged to jets and clouds. The next, to something new, something human-sized, gentle, personal. It's still early. Regulations will need rewriting. Airspace will need rethinking. Cities will have to stretch upwards in ways they never planned. But that's how all futures begin, not with certainty, but with courage. And while other nations debate, Dubai acts. It embraces, it adapts, it dares. In a world still clinging to gas pedals and rear view mirrors, Dubai is asking a different question. What if we looked up instead of forward? The X2 may not carry many people yet. It may not fly for long, but it has already done the most important thing a machine can do. It has proven we were right to believe. So when you look up next time, Above the noise, beyond the towers, don't be surprised if something small, silent and impossible is already passing overhead. Let's end this. The world didn't stop when the flying car rose, but something shifted, quietly. A boundary dissolved between what we thought was real and what suddenly was. It didn't need wings to make us dream. It didn't need noise to prove its power. The X2 lifted more than itself that day. It lifted a century of questions, of hopes, of half-built prototypes and broken promises. Now, they all float together, in motion, in the sky, and somewhere, just beyond the horizon, a sixth generation waits. Not in the future, but now. Because sometimes, history doesn't land. It takes off.